Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Tuesday, August the 8th, 2017. Today's topics of discussion, obviously, Tropical Storm Franklin over the Yucatan this morning, and Invest Area 99L is starting to show up again in terms of the chatter that it might develop eventually. There's just something about Invest 99L, the one last year that eventually became Hermine, took forever to do so, and it looks like this one may do the same. There is a chance that this could try to develop somewhere in this area over the next several days. So let's take a look at the latest on Franklin, the 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Intermediate advisory shows that winds are down to 45 miles per hour, and the pressure is up to almost 1,000 millibars. So it has filled a little bit. The pressure center has filled. The winds have come down just a little bit, as you would imagine, with it being over land there. And, of course, it's moving west-northwest at 14 miles per hour. This is what the track map looks like from the National Hurricane Center, that west-northwest trajectory, and then straightening out more westerly overall into Mexico between Tampico and Veracruz farther to the south. Uh, sometime late tomorrow night, very early on Wednesday. Now, it doesn't show in the official forecast plots here that this becomes a hurricane, but I believe that the opportunity for it to become a hurricane is very high because of several factors. Uh, we can look at the wide shot. Before we zoom in on Franklin, let's look at what we have going on. Here's the tropical storm over the Yucatan, and you can see a fairly well-established outflow pattern where the air see if I can draw this correctly, it comes in at the surface like this, and then in the upper levels of the atmosphere it's going out like that in a clockwise fashion, uh, being exhausted away from that low-level heat source that is the center of the storm. Meanwhile, between Franklin here and 99L over here, there's this upper-level low-pressure area spinning uh, over the southwest Atlantic, and this is inducing some uh, wind shear over 99L. And until this goes away, and it's forecast to eventually do so, uh, sort of back off, uh, this is going to continue to struggle. That being said, we are seeing a burst of shower and thunderstorm activity with the system, but those showers and thunderstorms are being blown away from any low-level center that's probably down here somewhere trying to consolidate. We'll take a closer look and 99L in just a moment. So let's zoom in on what's happening with Franklin here and I'll explain why I believe this has a great shot at becoming the season's first hurricane. The first and the most obvious thing is there's a decent area of ocean water for that core, what inner core there is right there, to move over. And this distance here covering more than 24 hours, it should be able to strengthen because this water down here is very warm uh, anomalously so. It's warmer than it should be this time of year. And the second thing, uh, over land, interestingly enough, Franklin has tightened up. You can see the center of circulation right in there. And he even looks like an eye tried to appear for a brief time. So the core of the system is intact, but it wasn't disrupted much because there wasn't much of it. And if anything, the core may have become better organized do, believe it or not, to the frictional, frictional effects of land, uh, much like we saw with Tropical Storm Fay over South Florida in 2008, where it actually became better organized even while over land. Uh, the Yucatan Peninsula through here, hey, some thunder sound effects from Mother Nature. Uh, boy, it has been raining and the lightning. Uh, I had to wait until after 10 a.m. here to do this because it was just literally too loud with the thunder uh, and the very heavy rainfall just a little while ago. It's about 10.15 now, Eastern Time. Anyway, back to the story at hand. I think that this well-defined inner core, once it reaches the coast over here and starts to uh, feel the very warm water, and actually the warmest of the water is farther away from the coast, about like this, and uh, once it does so, I think it's going to have a good opportunity to feed itself and become a hurricane. You've got a really decent band still in existence over here on the uh, east side and it's trying to wrap around into that. 
and it has the well-established outflow. And so it won't surprise me at all if this is uh, probably, my estimation, would be about a 90 mile per hour hurricane at landfall. So we'll see how close Mark was to that tomorrow and to Thursday. Uh, looking at the upper ocean heat content, and we have our uh, tracking map program plotting the course of Franklin over the top of that. You see it generally rides along 20 degrees latitude here, and the upper ocean heat content is fairly high. It's uh, right here in the middle part of the scale, and so it definitely has a lot of warm water to work with, to be sure. So, you know, I think it's going to go. And looking at the track forecast from the different models, pretty straightforward. The envelope overall is pretty tight. We don't have any deviation from that. Again, always ignore the CLP-5. That's really not a model, per se, so don't worry about that. It's not going to have some weird chance of heading up to Texas. Why is that not going to happen? Well, there's enough mid-level ridging over here, and there's enough mid-level ridging out this way. Of course, it's too late for anything to the east. It's just generally blocked by this area of high pressure over the Gulf. Uh, and even though there are disturbances that have ridden through, like the one last night and yesterday that impacted San Antonio and then Houston with even more flooding, uh, that ridge is strong enough out there that this is just going to be sort of pushed down uh, by this wall of air, literally not allowing this to turn north. It's just too dense of a system. So it's just going to ride west uh, to maybe just north of west into the central western Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche side of Mexico. Now looking at the intensity guidance here, pretty sharp increase in all of the guidance here right after it gets out over the water. And I just think it's going to go up enough uh, so that we do see it in the Cat 1, solid Category 1 hurricane range and then of course when it makes landfall it's going to die away very quickly with the low level center uh, we go back to the plots here the low level center will continue inland well the, uh, I'm sorry the low level center will die quickly and the mid and upper level center will continue inland a ways and then die out so I doubt there's going to be anything left over here in the Pacific uh, just ignore that alright so moving on along the upper level winds uh, this is important for a couple of things. First of all, let's outline what's what. Here's the east coast of the United States. We have Florida through Louisiana and Texas. And then here's the Yucatan where we have uh, Franklin located. And here's Invest Area 99L. This is our upper level low. You can see the counterclockwise turning of the wind barbs in here. And uh, this general uh, troughing from it overall, just cyclonic flow. In fact, we can see that a little bit better on this shot, which we're going to go to in a second. So hold on. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. So the upper level uh, winds here, very light for the most part near Franklin. This is not favorable, and it's an upper level low itself, so it doesn't really matter. Sometimes they can, they can work their way to the surface, like we saw with Joaquin back in 2015, but I don't think that will happen with this. And then as we see over here, the upper level winds... Uh, pretty strong. There's some 30 knots in here uh, blowing around uh, 99L, so that's not very conducive. And if we look at the uh, annotation that the folks at the University of Wisconsin add, sort of helping us understand green is stop. I'm sorry, boy, backwards. Green is go, red is stop, generally, right, in our world of stoplights. And so you can see over here with 99L, it's red. And you can see the outline of this you know, sort of upper trough pattern with an upper level low helping to feed that with some strong upper level winds. But it looks like that uh, upper level high pressure is going to try to build over this region and allow this to not only strengthen but to move west-northwest somewhere north of Puerto Rico over the next few days with 99L. So we'll have to watch that as some of the models are starting to sniff it out a little bit more. In the meantime, northerly winds uh, over the Gulf, but very light, 5 to 10 knots at the most. Maybe 15, but that's pushing it, I think. And it shouldn't be enough to disrupt what's happening with Franklin. I believe once it gets going, it'll generate enough upward motion itself uh, to create sort of this anticyclonic flow above it as it moves out over the Bay of Campeche 
and develops further. So uh, pretty much favorable conditions there. Looking at the vorticity signature, uh, Franklin, of course, very round, no question about it, tropical storm symbol covering that up, but it's very, very healthy in terms of its bundling of the energy. Speaking of energy, there's the Vort, uh, the Vort Max over the Houston area, southeast Texas. More flooding in Houston, especially along the I-10 corridor west of Houston through the Katy area. Just ridiculous uh, how that keeps happening there. The flood capital of the United States, it seems. And then all of this instability here. All of this is vorticity or energy in the atmosphere, but it's stretched out. You know, there's not one singular cyclone, so to speak. I mean, this is a little small area of low pressure, perhaps, a little vort max within the overall bigger picture. But this is what it looks like when the energy is spread out. This is what it looks like when the energy is bundled, and you have a more potent tropical system because of that. Now, 99L over here, still stretched out, looks like a, I don't know, you know, uh, part of a, uh, an amoeba or something, still amorphic in its shape. However, if you look at where it's starting to concentrate right in here, I think this might be some of the first signs that this is eventually going to have a shot to develop. So let's watch this over the next day or so as this continues to move off to the west-northwest with time and see how this progresses. Uh, in fact, some of the GFS ensembles, remember, the European and the GFS both have the operational models, but then there are the ensemble models that are different versions of the model run with different variables, and so you get different outputs. Some of those outputs can be pretty dramatically different, and what you're looking for is any kind of a mean or an average uh, that you can glean from it, and just to kind of you know play what if with some of these models. And the uh, GFS ensembles, uh, there's 20 of them total, and generally, you can look at the consensus here of something trying to develop somewhere in the vicinity of the region north of Puerto Rico. That's about the best that I can put it. And of course, the European model showing something very similar. Uh, and it's interesting because the biggest clustering and the density is right through here, well north of the Lesser Antilles, so I don't think you folks are going to have to worry about this too much. Maybe a little bit of a concern for Puerto Rico, perhaps the U.S. British Virgin Islands, but I think this will pretty much stay to the north of your region. Again, something we can monitor over the next couple of days, especially once Franklin is inland over Mexico and generally out of the pattern. And just a little bit more arguing for support. Most of the modeling here shows a marked uptick in about the four to five day time frame and that indicates improving conditions. Some of the models there are indicating even a Category 1 hurricane. So yeah, this has my attention. We'll be watching it closely. No reason to even speculate yet about what the pattern would be in terms of steering, how much ridging we'll have over the Atlantic versus any troughing that might be coming down that would capture this and maybe send it out to sea. That's usually the most likely scenario, and I say that because if it wasn't, Nobody would live along the east or the Gulf Coast of the U.S. because we'd have too many hurricanes. Most hurricanes don't hit the U.S., obviously. So let's wait and see what happens. That being said, water temperatures, this is the anomaly map updated yesterday. Uh, very warm still in the Atlantic Basin, no doubt about that, no change. And uh, certainly above normal here in the Bay of Campeche. This is interesting, the development of a cold area in the equatorial Pacific. No El Nino. In fact, this is now cold neutral, and that argues for a very busy hurricane season. Uh, you're going to have ups and downs, a couple of weeks where there's nothing happening, and a couple of weeks where two or three storms will develop, and that's probably going to continue through the month of October. That would be my opinion on the matter. You'll have these ups and downs, and you better watch out during the ups, uh, depending on where you are, and we're seeing that with impacts now in uh, Central America and the Yucatan and eventually into Mexico. And who knows after that? We'll just have to keep watching. All right, well, that's all I've got for today. I do appreciate you tuning in. Just one video update today. Tomorrow we'll be back to um, uh, two, probably, and then live coverage again in the 12 hours or so up to landfall 
of Franklin. There's some more thunder uh, in mainland Mexico. We'll figure out when we're going to do that. And I say live coverage. I'm not going to Mexico, uh, but we're going to do sort of a now cast. Well, I did this yesterday into last night. I'll pop in every once in a while and discuss things, and then we'll just kind of play satellite loops, radar loops, etc. in the meantime. And it's a great way. We do this on YouTube Live. People can chat, throw in their two cents, ask questions, learn from each other, learn from me, I learn from you. It's neat. It's something we can do with social media, and YouTube is certainly a big part of that. So stay tuned as to when that will be, more than likely sometime tomorrow into tomorrow night. All right, well, that's, again, it for me, uh, for me, from me, for today. I am Mark Settle for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll have more for you tomorrow.